What's up guys, it's Carl here, back with another one, and I'm technically snowboarding at the time of this very video, but this is some important news. So many people have asked me this, what is the next budget iPhone gonna look like? And I know the rumor mills have just been off the chains lately. We've seen leaks of the iPhone 9 slash iPhone SE 2, whatever you wanna call it, but it recently peaked at an all-time high over on Twitter where we saw an actual video of the alleged phone in the flesh, and I know, yes, it was on Twitter, TikTok, you gotta take things with a grain of salt, but everyone's talking about it, and it looks very similar to, say, this guy, the iPhone 11, minus, of course, the one camera. You'll also see the model has very flat edges, whereas most modern iPhones now have very rounded corners, so it's almost like a hybrid between the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 4. I'm usually more partial to flatter edges. I prefer boxy designs. It makes putting skins on the back of the phone easier, and I just like having that nice feeling of the line in my hand. It's almost like I'm pricking myself every time I pick up my phone. And the second thing that a lot of people are discrediting is the Apple logo on the back is slightly off center. And I don't think that was the biggest deal, but I was looking more at the color options that you could get. It's in the same teal cyan blue color as we see on the iPhone 11. You know that the iPhone 8s now only come in the standard space gray, the gold, silver. And I think that's the pretty truthful direction that their budget line should be going towards playful colors, whereas their pro models, say iPhone 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, those should lean towards the metallic colors. That does seem a bit more pro. Obviously, we're just speculating here. And other than having those flatter edges, the iPhone 9's physical layout should be almost identical to the iPhone 8. There are a couple rumors saying it's 0.5 millimeters larger. Case companies are already producing cases for them, and that shouldn't be too hard on their end. I wouldn't even be surprised if they didn't change dimensions. You've got the exact same cutout for the camera on the back. But I think the biggest question for the new iPhone 9 slash SE2 is the price. And we've seen this across videos, across leaks. They're saying it's gonna cost $399, and that will be the first time iPhones dip below the $400 price point. And I do think it's a tough sell, but I could see Apple going in that direction. We've seen for the past couple years, iPhone prices, they're reaching $1,500 for a fully spec model. That's how much my iPhone 11 Pro Max costs, and I think Apple is losing a ton of sales in the budget or entry-level models. They already have the tech and assembly lines in place. It would only make sense for them to come out with a cheaper model. As we both know, Apple is notorious for keeping their prices extremely high. That's the question that I'm not too sure about the most. You know, I'm sure that the cheaper end model is coming. I just don't know if it will retail for 400 bucks. Let me know your guys' thoughts. And on the other side of the device, like I mentioned, it'll be the exact same as the iPhone 8. So 4.7 inch display, it will have classic touch ID and some people swear by it, some people hate face ID, and I think that alone will sell that phone. Funnily enough, maybe I was teasing this when I was coming home from my trip in the Philippines, I was flying through China, everyone had masks to protect themselves, my face ID obviously wouldn't work and it even wouldn't re-register my face when I had a mask on, so maybe that's a bonus. I know it's affecting some of their sales, some of their assembly line. More on that in a bit though. We do have to discuss what's gonna come hardware-wise. Because the iPhone 8s already have the A11 Bionic, we've got the A13 Bionic in the 11 family. I could see them settling on the A12. It wouldn't make sense for Apple to put older chipsets in a newer phone, but maybe to keep that $399 price point, they might have to. And I think the chipset will determine what price point that phone comes in at. Camera-wise, we did see the one sensor, and I think that's bang on. They're saving the multiple sensors for, say, the iPhone 11 or the 11 Pro with the three sensors. That makes total sense. And speaking of coronavirus, I think they've officially called it COVID-9 now. That also might impact the launch date, which typically is around the end of March. March 31st is the rumored keynote date. Apple has already released their own official statement saying coronavirus has impacted sales. It might affect supply chain. So we could perhaps not even see the iPhone SE2, iPhone 9, maybe until a couple months down the road. Really curious what you guys have to say about this one. This is usually the most popular iPhone model that releases in the year. I know this one will probably sell the most, just like hotcakes, 
but will we see an iPhone under $400? I think that's the burning question that everyone wants to know. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video, if it kind of confirmed all of your thoughts, if you're lusting after the new iPhone, we're hoping that we see something coming this spring. We'll have that official coverage here first on the channel as always, so make sure you stay posted and we'll catch the rest of you guys in one of my next vids or vlogs. Peace.